the, the ways in which the previous generation struggle presented was presented to me did not particularly make sense. And so um, notions of nonviolence, for instance, uh, when I walked down to the streets of West Baltimore, seemed to have very, very little applicability. Uh, violence was essential to one's life. It was everywhere. It was, it was all around us. And then when one looked out to the broader countries, I became, you know, more politically conscious. It was quite, you know, uh, obvious that violence was essential to to America, uh, to its past, to its present, and, and to its future. And so, in between, you know, how how my politics and how I viewed the world at that time, and what was, you know, presented as as, as my political heritage, and instead, I, I very much, you know, gravitated really to Malcolm X, who, I, you know, I would argue influences this book, who had a very, very pragmatic, tactile view of, of, of America and of history. I, you know, I can remember the message to the grassroots, him saying, you know, uh, uh, don't keep, you know, he's critiquing, you know, violence. And so he says, don't give up your life, preserve your life. It's the best thing you have going. And if you got to give it up, you know, make sure it's even Stephen. And some hear that as braggadocio, but for me, it was a profound claim about the value of your body. That your body is the most essential thing you have, and it should not be sacrificed because these folks down in Mississippi or Alabama are out of their mind. Preserve your body, and that to me was just so beautiful and so real. It was not esoteric. It made perfect sense. And that's what I saw when I opened up, you know, my history books about the country. Uh, it, it, it just seemed, you know, when, when he says, you know, when Malcolm says, you know, uh, e violence is wrong in America and violence is wrong. Well, that is such a, you know, essential critique that should be leveled, levied, you know, as far as I'm concerned, before any president that stands up for Martin Luther King Day. Either violence is wrong or it's not. You know, one has to, you know, justify it. And so that, that you know, was just profound. Life in Baltimore was, is, you know, and will be for some time, you know, quite violent. Um, I can remember that, you know, to talk about it in the book, you know, being a young man coming out of my elementary school, uh, seeing, a, you know, what should have been just an after school, you know, I find seeing one of these boys pull out a gun. And being very, very present at the age of, say, 11 years old, the children were walking around with the ability to end the lives of other children, are uh, going into middle school, having an entire ritual. Uh, totally devoted to making sure I was safe. You know, concerns about what I was wearing, uh, concerns about who I was walking to school with, concerns about how many people I was walking to school with, concerns, you know, uh, 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 during, you know, lunchtime about where I was sitting, where I was spending my time. And at the same time, being aware, dimly aware, that somewhere out in the world, uh, the majority of Americans did not have to carry that fear with them.